welcome everyone. Um, thanks for coming by. We're gonna get started in a few minutes. Uh, we're just gonna let people come in. Thank you for being adaptable as we transition to this event being online. Really appreciate it. Just hang tight. We'll get started soon. Um, yeah. I don't, just gonna stand here, I guess. <laughs> Wait, let's see the flapping bird down. Is that, do you want it? Do you guys want to, okay. Caleb, can you manage the chat? Do you guys want to see Flappy Bird? All right, we're going to show you Flappy Bird as a little, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, uh, a precursor to what is to come later in the first uh, oh, oh. Don't die. I'm embarrassing myself, man. You need a the Jappy Bird Pro. If you guys join Dab, you will be able to make this yourself. Watch out. Oh, man. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh. Uh. Do you want to just, uh, do you want to disable the waiting room? Those of you just joining, we're waiting for people to trickle in and playing Flappy Bird in the meantime. So uh, hang tight for a bit and enjoy this entertainment. <coughs> oh, that was close. Oh. What's the Flappy Bird song, by the way? Is there music? Yeah. You can probably go ahead and get started, right? Just um, over our introductory stuff. Yeah. All right. Are we? Uh, I think I think we're ready to get started. Because whose audio is on? Some. Um. Anyway, well, thank you everyone for coming to Project Info Session. Sorry about the last minute confusion about transitioning it to be online. I don't think anyone could have foreseen that there was like literally going to be lightning. Um, so yeah, thanks for being adaptable. Um, and thank you for coming. We have a lot of good information for you today about our amazing projects. Our leads have been super hard at work putting this together for you. Um, and we hope that you can use this session to get to know our projects better, our workshops better, our, our IEEE offerings um, that are in store for you. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, before, actually, sorry, before we get into it, uh, we have a few quick announcements that we would like to go over. Um, get those over with. First off, um, we mentioned this at GM, but this year we are having Lab Bucks um, that as, as an inaugural fun initiative it closely intertwined, intertwined with our projects. <coughs> so this works really well for projects because Lab Bucks will be intertwined with our project curriculum, so you will get lab bucks for participating in lectures and completing assignments, and then you can redeem those lab bucks to earn lots of fun things throughout the year, like IEEE merch, um, food, snacks at lectures, or just in the lab. And then rumor has it that there is a fun secret menu in the works of fun prizes that you can use with your lab bucks. Um, so there will be integration with Discord and Sparky to make it really easy to use. That will be coming soon. Um, but yeah, your leads will give you more information. Next up, we have some external people who have some fun announcements. Okay, uh, hello, uh, I'm Ben, and this is Rebecca, and we're actually from uh, ASME at UCLA. However, ASME has a number of uh, multidisciplinary projects, and we need people from all sorts of majors, and we especially need electrical engineers. Uh, so uh, 
uh, IEEE has uh, let us present really quickly our project. So the first project is Bruin Underwater Robotics. Uh, Bruin Underwater Robotics is, like I said, a, robotics is a multidisciplinary field, so you get to work with people of all majors to build a complex underwater robot for either competition or research purposes. Uh, and another fun thing about Bruin Underwater Robotics is this is our first in-person year, so you'll get to shape how the project turns out in the future. Uh, and this year we have three teams. We have the competition team, uh, where we're gonna be building a robot for a competition in the spring. We have the AUV design team, where we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be working on uh, computer vision and stuff to prepare us for the RoboSub autonomous vehicle competition, uh, which will hopefully enter in future years. And we finally have the Tripati Lab research team, which is working in conjunction with the UCLA Tripati Lab to build an underwater robot for research purposes. And if you're interested in finding out more, we have a uh, QR code for links to both of our things, this one and the next one here, uh, as well as more info is available tomorrow at our kickoff at 6 p.m. in Engineering 4, 38, 138. Awesome, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna talk about X1 Robotics, which is the second ASME project that we're advertising today. Um, so X1 is also really interdisciplinary. Um, but we actually work on transforming robots that students pitch. So you'll pitch a robot concept and then we'll vote on which one we like. Uh, we'll also actually spend a year uh, working on that robot. Um, however, we have two ongoing projects this year. We're gonna have our new project. So you can pitch, you can vote on other people's pitches, you can join that team. We also have one ongoing project called Broombot. This is a project that we started a couple years ago. So it's this friendly little uh, bear shaped friendly robot that goes around UCLA campus. So we're gonna be continuing working on that project this year because that'll be a little bit more hands-on with manufacturing and wiring and all that stuff. So if you're interested in either of these, um, our project kickoff is immediately after the FAR project kickoff. So it's the same room, October 5th, and it's at 7 p.m. So if you're interested in one or both, you can come to that event. Uh, yeah, and that's all from ASME. Yeah, thank you, Aitra. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Um, so this is just a fun little thing. Um, so this is gonna be more fun in person, but I have this little jar of push buttons that we found in our lab. Um, so a fun way to kick off lab bucks that we thought would be, you can guess how many push buttons are in this jar. The closest guess or whoever gets it exactly will win 100 lab bucks. Um, so I'm just gonna hold this up here close to the camera. You can see, get a good look at it. This picture is also on the project app form. So. Submit your responses when you submit your project applications. There's a question at the end of it um, for a chance to win those extra lab bucks. And as an added bonus, um, if you can guess how many of them in here are through hole, most of them are SMD, but there are some through hole push buttons in here. If you can guess exactly how many, that honestly, like, I think the biggest benefit would just be, I would be extremely impressed if you somehow knew um, but there will be extra lab book prizes for the person who gets it closest. So if you want to come stop by the lab, this jar will be here if you want to get an in-person look, um, but put your guesses on the project apps form. Um, so now I think that is everything in terms of announcements. So now we're going to have a chance to learn more about our projects. And first up, we have workshops. Oh, well, never mind, first, never mind. First, a little overview. If you don't, if you didn't remember from GM, we have, we offer five four-year projects as well as our SPI student project initiative and many workshops throughout the year. So just a brief overview before all those projects uh, come up and give a detailed talk. We have our open project space, which is also known as OPS, and it's basically an introduction to circuits and EE. It's very great for freshmen or sophomores who have, or even transfers that have never had EE experience before or have never worked with a hands-on project and just want to learn things like soldering and basic circuit skills. So that's good for those kinds of groups. We also have our slightly more advanced projects like MicroMouse, um, which is uh, to build a maze solving robot. You get to build a rat and a mouse, I guess, throughout the year, which will be really cool. And then AP, which is Aircopter, and that's to create a hovering quadcopter, which we have a live demo of today, right? Zim? Yep. Oh right. uh, yeah. And then we have our, my favorite project, I, I'd say from personal experience, the Digital Audio Visualizer, or DAV, which is, works with FPGAs, which is basically kind of like computer hardware and digital logic, and you get to create some cool games like Flappy Bird, as well as uh, an FPGA-based spectrum analyzer. 
And then finally, one of our newest projects to be piloting uh, in the past two years is wireless RF and analog project, also known as RAP, which is to implement, implement like radio wireless communication interface. And then if none of those appeal to you, we have SPI, Student Project Initiative, where you can pitch your own project to us, and Aaron will uh, provide potentially provide funding if we approve your project. And then also workshops led by Sedant and uh, David to just kind of teach you some basic skills throughout the course. So with that, I'm pretty sure our next slide is workshops. Yes, welcome workshops. All right, hello everyone. Uh, before I get into these slides, I have a prop of sorts. So, I don't know if this is visible. All right. Okay, so this is a PCB, of course, and it has some through-hole components soldered onto it. And of course, the cool thing about it is that if I snap, oh, the IEEE is uh, lit, as it is, um, and then you snap, <laughs> and it turns back off. So this is a uh, one of many cool examples of hands-on projects that you will be able to do in the workshops that we have at IEEE. Oh, sorry. Okay, so every quarter we plan three to four uh, technical workshops. And the, the great thing about the workshops is that the great thing about the <laughs> workshops is that there's no commitment required. You don't have to fill out a form and sign up for whatever workshops you want right now. You can decide as they come up. You don't have to go to a certain minimum of them. Um, you can show up to whichever ones you like or not show up to whichever ones you don't like. And for every single workshop, we have a first part which will have a lecture with slides and some uh, demonstrations. And then the second part for every workshop is going to be a hands-on demo. So either you'll have the PCB as we showed off earlier or for stuff like MATLAB, um, we have some sort of project for you guys to be able to do on your own, and then you have a really cool project to show off on your resume or just as a skill, and take that forward building your own projects. Okay, and then if David is here. Um, as you guys didn't know, my name is Margo. I'm a second year transfer student and I'm a really big climber fan. So. And I'm Preston. I'm the other ops co lead. I really like Tetris. That's my fun fact. I'm also a, I'm a second year electrical engineering major. All right, so what is OPS? OPS, which is also referred to as Open Project Space, is our introductory electrical engineering project at IEEE. It's going to be the project where you don't have to have any experience whatsoever because we're going to be teaching you everything starting from the beginning of the year. We have a lot of year-long projects that are going to teach you the introductory electrical engineering topics such as circuit, uh, breadboarding, circuit designing, and also uh, serial communication. And um, at the very end, we're going to have a couple of capstone projects where you can kind of cultivate all the information that you've learned throughout the year to create something really fun that you can show off to your friends and also put on your resume. Nice. So um, there's a lot of stuff that you'll get out of Ops this year. Um, if you decide to join us, you'll get to learn about breadboarding, soldering, microcontrollers, sensors, serial communication, and Bluetooth. 
You'll also learn more abstract skills like problem solving, how to work in a team, creativity, and one of the most important things you'll get from ops is just so much experience with the basics so that uh, you can feel confident going into the later and more advanced projects and also make many friends along the way. So these are a couple of the projects that you can look forward to be doing throughout the year. We have a distance sensor, a music player, and then we have one more, which is an autonomous maze following car. Right now, uh, this year, we've kind of adjusted it, adjusted it to follow a wall. So um, these are, again, all the projects that you'll be able to do. And you're going to be learning everything uh, from us, so there's really no experience necessary. Yes, so after, at the very last quarter, in spring quarter, we'll, find, we'll have a capstone project. So this will have all of, the, um, all of the information that you've learned over the year will build up into this capstone project, which is a wall following robot. So it has sensors on the front and it will be able to uh, move the wheels and move the car along with the wall in front of it, which is super cool. Um, and it's a great way to, um, to culminate all that you learned throughout the year. So yeah, that's what you can look forward to if you're doing ops. In terms of the ops time commitment, we're expecting to have three to four lectures per quarter. This equates to about two to three hours um, per week in the lab to be able to complete your projects. One thing to note is that we do require a $115 deposit. However, I do want to, to note that you will be getting that money back as long as you finish the projects. So it's kind of like you're paying yourself to learn to do all of these really awesome things. Um, in addition, we have the ops contract and syllabus that you should definitely read and so, uh, definitely read to learn more about um, what's to be expected from you and what you can also expect from us. Awesome, yeah. So like she was saying, um, if you complete each of the little projects throughout the year, you'll get your deposit completely back and more so because you get to keep all of the parts. So it's really a great deal. We really recommend you come to it, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, this is really the place uh, that you should be. So I hope to, hope you guys apply for, for ops. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this is just a timeline of the open project space uh, syllabus. You guys can also find all of this information on the syllabus as well. But again, these are just some really cool topics that you're gonna be able to learn. In terms of who we're expecting to apply, again, you don't have to have a lot of information or knowledge, but we just expect you to be interested in the topics and to want to learn how to do all of these cool projects. Yeah, and here are some of the uh, some of the links that you'll get to. We're gonna have a, the project application will be released at, at the end of this info session, and also we have a little bit more information and syllabus which you can get to through these links and also feel free to contact us by email if you have any questions we'll get back to you right away and uh, we hope to hear from you at the end also we're gonna have some some breakout rooms where if you have any questions you can talk to us yeah apply for ops yeah. <laughs> right, uh, well thank you ops next up we have our next project which is a uh, well uh, Brandon's favorite one is Dab. Mine is Micro Mouse for <laughs> historical reasons. So, welcome, Micro Mouse. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So, uh, we're going to be talking about Micro Mouse, uh, one of IEEE's projects. So, in Micro Mouse, you're going to build a maze-solving robot, design your own PCB, program microcontrollers, and compete against other teams. So uh, first things first, before we talk about anything else, um, I just want to note that although this, this project does sound uh, pretty complicated, we don't require any experience. Yeah, you're seeing that correct. Uh, next slide. Um, However, there are a few things that you know are helpful to have uh, if, if, if you do have experience before. We do say that it's good to have you know basic uh, C programming, circuit theory, um, and soldering like experience. But none of those things are strictly required um, for you for you to to be a part of Micromouse. 
So we're just, okay. <laughs> uh, in fall quarter, we're gonna have four lectures and assignments for you to do to learn all the basics of what you need to do to make a maze solving robot. So you're gonna put together your raft and, um, and learn all the basics. And at the end of the quarter, we're gonna have a rat competition. You'll be able to compete with your fellow um, micromousers. Uh, you can win some prizes. And also in fall, we're gonna have a social event so everyone can get to know each other. Uh, during winter quarter, this is when things really get interesting. This is where you're going to be making your own mouse. So instead of using a rat that we've given to you, you're going to design your own PCB and choose the parts that you want in order to create a mouse that you know works for you and what, what you think is custom. So that could mean like adding your own um, components like a gyro or an accelerometer or something special. Um, and that's all up to you. But we'll teach you how from, from, uh, from the start how to design your PCB, how to use the software and to make it so that you can order from, uh, from a PCB maker and, and actually get a physical product in your hand. Um, also during winter quarter, we're going to talk a lot about maze solving and actually making your mouse smart. And we're gonna also have uh, more lectures about you know, customizing your mouse and making it your own. Next slide. So then at the end of the year in spring quarter, uh, everyone's going to keep working on their mice, making things better and better in order to prepare for our AAMC, which is the All-American Micromouse Competition. That's a uh, multi-university competition that we host here at UCLA, so everyone will have the opportunity to compete with uh, big mazes and win prizes. Okay, and here's some of the skills that you'll learn if you join us uh, oh, uh, in Micromouse. Next. Um, so one of the, the major things that I've already talked about a little bit is PCB design. Uh, you're going to be using Autodesk Eagle and you'll, you'll learn how to use the software. It's actually surprisingly complicated. Um, and, and you'll learn how to make your own PCB and how to choose parts on DigiKey and everything that you would need to, to know in order to uh, design your own projects and actually get them shipped here. You're also going to learn a lot about C programming specifically embedded programming on a microcontroller. Um, and so you'll do all sorts of control algorithms with that, as well as, well as maze solving algorithms, including the flood fill algorithm. And one of the last things uh, that we have here is uh, learning about sensors and different control algorithms. So we're gonna be navigating the maze using, uh, you know, uh, infrared sensing and coders. So you'll have to learn how to, you're, you have to use all these different sensors in order to control your mouse precisely. Um, using something called PID. You're going to learn about a little bit of sensor fusion and how to take in all of the inputs that your mouse sees and how to actually compute that into uh, an action that to, to do next. So you'll learn that as uh, you know one of the bases here in MicroMouse. So um, as with all the other projects, our application deadline is on Saturday and we'll have our first lecture um, this coming next week. And uh, so you can scan here to, to take a look at our syllabus. And then, uh, yeah, um, hope you guys are going to apply to our project. Thank you. All right, thank you, Micromouse. Uh, next up, we have another very, very cool project. We have DAB. All right, so a quick transition from C and C++ land. Uh, if you're here for digital audio visualizer, you're probably th thinking you want to learn very long. So let's get into what the product's all about. Andrew? So what are the product requirements? Nothing. Nada. Zilch. We only really require about one brain cell. We round up. And uh, M116 is a plus, but it's not necessarily required. Next slide, please. Okay. So digital audio visualizer, right? Looks like a pretty might look a complex project. We're going to break it down. So over the year, what we're going to do is we're going to work on taking an audio input and getting to a, an output that we'll show later. And how we're going to do that is first we're going to translate the, the input from the mic, then we're going to process it with a Fourier transform, and then we're going to generate the display output with, the, with some VGA signals. But how we're going to get there, right, is we're going to teach you through a set of seven labs that you can see here, all broken down. So a lot of these labs build up into using an FPGA. Yeah, yeah. Those are the first few labs that we do. And then the later labs work on specific protocols and functionality, like doing a Fourier transform, working with the VGA, 
or maybe even um, doing more complex computations. Let me start clicking through the slide. You'll see some of the components we add in are uh, an added free microphone that we'll teach you how to work with, and then a VGA monitor, which we'll work with to display output on. And that is just a demo, but we'll show you an even cooler demo later. All righty, next slide. So what we're gonna be learning is the basics of digital logic. This is gonna be a uh, system Verilog as well as what digital signals are. A lot of ones and zeros and a lot of one and zero math. Uh, these are some basic logic gates and a uh, clock diagram. Next slide, please. So from the digital logic slide, if you've taken M16, you might have recognized some of the AND gate or gate logic gates. And what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna transit them all into physical hardware. So we're gonna give you this thing called the Intel D10 Max Lite. That is the FPGA and development board that we use. Um, it's not Xilinx, sorry, um, if you wanted to use Xilinx. This is your Intel welcome. one. Um, but we will be taking that hardware and synthesizing digital circuits onto them. So we'll teach you how an FPGA works. You can kind of see there's input and, IO, uh, input and output blocks that we take signals uh, into and then do some processing on them with the logic gate inside that we'll all be wiring ourselves through Verilog code and then that will give us a DAB overall. All right, so some signal processing that we're gonna be doing is a fast Fourier transform and we're gonna actually be implementing a fast Fourier transform in hardware using something called a butterfly module. We're also gonna be working with ADCs and uh, DACs and then some other of the communication protocols that we're gonna be using is a VGA, of course, to show, our, show sounds on screen, as well as the I2S and a GPIO. So that's just some things that you're gonna learn. And putting it all together, we've got this cool demo for you here. All right, who's screaming in the mic? I'll do it. Okay. Woo! stick with us the whole year, you'll get to do this yourself, project your dab on the screen, maybe even for a karaoke night, and we'll have some people singing, and you'll be able to see all the frequencies within your own, or 16 of the frequencies within your sound you're making. Thank you. Sign up for dab. <laughs> Sign up for dab. Dab. Uh, like I said, it's a project near and dear to my heart. I was the project lead for that last year, and uh, essentially that was our pilot year, so we, me and David Cow at the previous uh, Dab, we kind of piloted the curriculum. So next up, we have Aircopter, who doesn't have a set of slides. Actually, they have a, uh, a poster board for you, be one for when we were still going to go in person, but this is also one of our cool projects that you can sign up for, and with that, take it off you and Jim. Yes, thank you. Originally, there were a lot more people who had poster boards, but we're the last survivors here. So, uh, welcome to Aircop Project. Oh, man, I need to like, duck down a little bit. So, let me just grab a chair. Oh, pass you a chair too? Okay, take a seat. Here you go. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, so uh, Aircopter, as the pictures and name might imply, is a project that's about designing a quadcopter. Uh, it covers a lot of similar things to MicroMouse in that we do PCB design, schematic design, but ultimately the goal here is to develop skills that are applicable to any electrical engineering project that you might want to undertake. So if you do Aircopter, you're going to pretty much going to, oh, I don't want to say you're going to be able to do anything that you want to that involves electrical engineering, but it'll give you a good solid foundation which you can use to do more complicated projects in the future. Yeah, uh, and in addition, our project has no prerequisites, except uh, it's really nice to have known a lot of these topics that we're going to be going over today. But if not, don't worry, we're going to teach you guys all of this throughout the course of the year. And the nice part is that most of these are covered in EE3 with Dr. Briggs. True. Okay, so we're going to go over some of these, some of these topics first. So um, first off, we have the microcontroller. You've definitely mentioned this in previous projects already. But a microcontroller is essentially just going to be the brains of our quad. It's going, we're going to deliver it power and it's going to allow us to act with our sub-circuits however we want. Uh, if you've ever had any workings with an Arduino, an Arduino is just a type of microcontroller, but these are more advanced. Um, we're going to be programming these over the years, so you will get plenty of experience with that as well, and that's going to be done in C or C++. 
So the next part, which is just as important, if not more so than the microcontroller, is the IMU. I'm holding one right here. It's rather small. And IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. What it is, it's a collection of sensors which are used to estimate the orientation of an object in the real world. In our case, we have an accelerometer and a gyroscope. As part of this project, you'll learn how to take the raw measurements from the IMU and convert them into something that's truly useful in order to calculate the way that the aircopter is tilting and be able to compensate for it. Because obviously, if it's tilting to the side, that means it's not straight up. That's bad, which Tim's going to talk about now. Right, so taking the IMU measurement from both the accelerometer and the gyroscope, we're going to be using that inside our PID, PID calculation. So, sorry if it's a little bit small here, but um, if you haven't heard of this before, PID stands for Proportional, Integral, and Derivative. Uh, if you've ever dealt with any kind of calculus, you definitely have been familiar with these terms, but we are essentially going to be using these three aspects to combine them into one general output that would allow our quad to compensate for any tiltings. So for instance, I have a previous quad from a year uh, in my hands here. And so imagine if it were to tilt to one side, we need to have our motors compensate for that. So we would want to have these motors power higher and these lower in order to tilt it back to true up. So that's the whole idea of PID. And again, if you haven't had experience with this in the past, don't worry, we're going to be going through all of this very thoroughly. Um, one actually interesting thing about PID is that there's, a, uh, there's an, a topic called settling time, which we'll go into as well. Essentially, if you go over with your compensation, you will overshoot and your quad will end up oscillating. And this is the one of the many things that we will discuss about. Correct, so the next thing, this is getting a bit more into uh, what I'm comfortable with, is printed circuit boards. As part of this project, you're gonna design your own schematic and your circuit board. Uh, then we're going to ship it off to a fab house uh, after we check you off, of course, to make sure that there are no mistakes, fingers crossed. And afterwards, you're going to be responsible for soldering it together, and hopefully it'll work at the end. Now, in case you don't know what a printed circuit board is, a printed circuit board is generally made out of fiberglass and copper sheets. Its function is essentially to be a better version of a breadboard, where the electrical components are placed on it, and connected to each other, but in a much more permanent way than on a breadboard, and generally in a much more secure way. And uh, it'll be the heart of our, well, it's not quite the heart, that'd be the microcontroller probably, but it's gonna be the skin and bones of our microcontroller in a way. Uh, and I lost the PCB I was gonna show you guys, but it's okay because well, it's you're gonna make your own. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, moving on, before you make your PCB, you're gonna have to have some kind of schematic design experience. So we will take you through that, and uh, just as an example here, we have, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, we're going to be making motor drivers. These are essentially sub-circuits that will drive our motors. So a quad has four motors, as you can see, in this central one as well. And each one of these will need to have a replication of this exact circuit. So there's a circuit here, uh, essentially just consists of motors and a couple passive components, such as an NMOS transistor and diodes and so on. Uh, so basically, we'll be creating this, and then we'll turn it into a PCB design. And starting from schematic, hopefully everything will go smoothly, and we will end up having four motors that you will be able to control to power high and low whenever you want it to. Uh, also, one interesting thing about motor drivers is that because we have four, um, not all of them can actually spin the same way. So two of them will be spinning clockwise, and two of them will be spinning counterclockwise. And if any of you want to think about that, it's because uh, these propellers spinning will create a torque, and if all four of them spin in the same direction, there will be a net torque in one direction, which will have our quad spin when we don't want it to. So we want those torques to cancel out. So that's why we have two spinning in one direction and two spinning in the other. Right, and the final part that of the aircopter recipe is the frame. The frame is honestly the least interesting part, but it's also one of the most important, because without a frame, you couldn't really put everything together to make it fly. And we just bring it up because uh, in the last year with COVID, uh, the previous leads redesigned the frame to make it bigger. Uh, this should help with some of the stability problems that older frames use. We don't have one to show of one of the older frames, but it's like two thirds the size of this one. And it was a bit harder to work with uh, due to its small size. Now, uh, one thing that we don't have on our poster board right here is the schedule. So we're just gonna give you a rundown right now. In fall quarter, is we're primarily going to focus on schematic design. You're going to work with Autodesk Eagle to create the schematic for your aircopter. During this time, we're going to check you off to make sure that you're doing things correctly along the way. Then in winter, we will have PCB design and also a little bit of soldering. 
Uh, this is, as Alexi said, we will be turning our schematic design into PCB designs, and then we will review them, and hopefully they will work well. Yeah. And then finally, in spring is where all of the stuff comes together. We'll be assembling the quads, programming them, and fingers crossed, uh, the quads will fly and not crash and burn. Uh, Perfect. Yep. Yeah, okay. So kind of summarizing what we talked about today, we can combine all of these different aspects into this central diagram here. It has a little bit of everything. And uh, well, actually before I, we do a quick demo, um, the sign up or application info is the same as every other project. So you'd be able to find that. And also our lectures, our lectures will begin next week and we'll send out an email about that. So don't worry about that for now. Okay, so really quick, here's our quad. Okay, so this is on a low duty second right now, so it's not gonna fly out of this roof. But essentially what this is demoing is the idea that we were talking about PID and also using some sensor fusion with the IMU. So it's sensing when it's tilting to one side and it automatically compensates for that. So unfortunately you can't experience this for yourself for now, but if you come around to the lab, you'll be able to see. Uh, and if you play around with it, you'll be able to feel when you, uh, when I tilt it to one side, two of these motors will compensate, and then these two will drop in duty cycle. So you can kind of hear it if I bring it closer. Hopefully that's audible. If not, then too bad. But yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah. And stick around for questions. We'll have breakout rooms after. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have one more project. It is the wireless analog and RF project. So take it away, Tyler and my mom. All right, hey guys. Um, if you were not uh, GM, real quick, I'm Tyler, and this is my awesome colleague, Saiba. Nice to meet everyone. Here in the flesh. Even if you were a GM, wasn't able to make it because I wasn't feeling too good, but I'm here now. All right, so uh, let's get into it. So real quick, just very high level summary of what we do. Um, the goal of RAP is to uh, design, working with small teams of four, uh, you'll design a wireless communication system that enables two microcontrollers to uh, talk to each other without wires. Um, so uh, next slide, go ahead. Um, so starting in the fall quarter, uh, you're going to pair up and then roughly half of the teams will learn everything they need in order to design a receiver, the other half will design a transmitter, and then uh, they'll do all this design work in uh, simulations, and then uh, going into winter quarter, these. So, real quick, them. if I may, uh, with receivers and transceivers, within the team of four, you split into two pairs of two, so that the team of four at the end has the ability to put together a full channel within itself. Also, although you'll only be designing and building one half of it, uh, you will have the knowledge to build either one. And we're going to make sure, like, the, the end goal here is that any individual down to the single person can, if they want, basically do the whole project solo if they wanted to as well by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so in winter quarter, uh, these, we're going to put these pairs together and they're going to uh, turn their simulations into an actual physical PCB. And yeah, there you go. Uh, so uh, we're going to, these eagles are going to design their PCB and then uh, review it a few times, order it, etc. Then uh, while those are on the way, we're going to start diving into the uh, digital signal processing part of this project, where uh, we actually code the microcontrollers to take advantage to utilize the transmitter receiver boards in order to communicate. Uh, and then spring, we're going to uh, we're gonna receive the boards, assemble them, uh, debug them, and then uh, and get them working. Okay, so I think all we're going to do now is go over these things one more time, but right. a little more depth. So in four quarter, like I was talking about, we start at the simulation level. Uh, with our first lecture, and um, this will be slightly short notice, we apologize, we weren't sure of all the application details when we first made this booking. The first lecture, as with all others, will be recorded, so in case you can't make the first one, which I believe is next Monday, I, I realize that'll be like really short notice, especially with the application due on Saturday and us getting back to you probably close to Monday morning. If you can't make immediately the one that Monday evening, uh, that's fine, it'll be recorded, and future lecture times we'll decide in collaboration with you guys. 
Um, but yeah, for the first lecture, we go into transistor basics. Uh, the first assignment is to have you build your, uh, not build, but design your very own amplifier. Uh, from there, we keep building in complexity. You build your own local oscillators, uh, in the mixer, in the RF filters, and as we go through all these steps, you also keep adding them to your whole receiver or transmitter module, so that by the end of the fall quarter, you have something that looks like this, or is at least very close to this, to the point where you can have, from start to end, a simulation result of what you want to happen in the real world. Right. Um, from there, we then come into winter quarter, which is where we start getting into some of the digital signal processing side of things and the PCB layout. So the PCB layout is something that we will be doing in Eagle. Uh, this is something that we won't go into too much. Um, we will kind of trust you guys to you know, work through the PCB designs and obviously we'll work with you and check off with you. Uh, we likely have one lecture to cover some things you want to keep in mind about signals at certain frequencies. Uh, some wires can start having certain properties at those frequencies. They'll start behaving like capacitors or inductors of certain values. And we'll discuss that in a lecture to make sure that you keep that in mind while you're doing your layout. The bulk of our time in winter quarter with you guys, which we'll be lecturing, and you know we'll obviously work with you in the lab as well, will be spent on the stuff on the left, right, the, this stuff, this stuff. I, I don't know what, yeah, this stuff. Uh, that's the digital signal processing. So to start with, we're going to be covering the math. And there's a fair bit of it because it, it is, uh, even though we're doing a fairly simple thing, it, it, it requires some math to make sure we can get ones and zeros through the air. There's a whole lot of stuff happening in the air, wind, ions, all that fancy stuff. Make sure it gets to the other side without too many errors. Um, so we'll be covering the math for that. We'll be starting by implementing it all in MATLAB. So that's something you learn as well. And then from there, we'll start uh, in spring quarter later, as Tyler will go into. Right maybe. now. Let's go. All right, so uh, in spring quarter, uh, we'll be receiving your PCBs, and you'll build something very pretty like this. Um, so step one, assemble it all. Well, so you'll learn kind of do the SMD soldering, how to wind your own transformer coils, potentially inductor coils too. Um, and then uh, that's step one. Uh, step two is tuning it and making it work because a lot of times uh, in a physical medium on a PCB, it won't work exactly how it does in simulation. So you'll learn some tips and tricks, how to use some lab tools like our, you know, we have a new signal generator and vector network analyzers to uh, dial it in to make it match the simulation. <coughs> Um, and then uh, once you have your, the teams have their boards working, they'll go on to uh, connect them up with the microcontrollers, like we said earlier, implement all the stuff we've done in MATLAB, but on a STM32 based microcontrollers uh, with in C. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, oh. I think you skipped a slide, then. All right. Oh, okay. The slide is not there. Uh, something went wrong. All right, uh, I'm going to quickly go over what we wanted to discuss there in Merlin. The one thing that we wanted to make clear is that RAP is a pretty involved project. I, I personally don't like the word advanced because we're all undergrads. Advanced doesn't mean shit. Um, <laughs> but it is pretty involved. Like As you may have gathered while we were speaking about this, especially in winter and spring, even within a single team of four, there's going to be a lot of moving parts. So even within a team of four, there'll, there'll be times where you're required to take a lot of independent action. Um, the lectures will cover a lot of the important theory you need to understand, but there'll be some gaps that we will expect you to be able to fill on your own, work with us, do your own research, you know, and we're obviously going to be working with you as closely as you'd like, but it, it is an involved project that will occasionally require a fair bit of time commitment. Along with that, uh, there, there are some uh, prerequisites that we're just going to assume you have, you have, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get into the meat of what we want this year to be. So um, courses that are really, really nice, again, not required. If you haven't taken these, please email us, reach out to us, and we'll see if we can make this project work for you. But courses that would be really nice to have are specifically ECE 102 and ECE 10 and 110. What we're basically looking for here is the ability to use signal and system logic uh, from, the, from the drop and you to be able to understand it or do your own research to work with it. And the same with circuits, where a functional and working knowledge of circuits is pretty important to be able to hit the ground running with this project. Uh, like we said though, if, if you don't have those and you're really interested in this project, please do reach out to us. We want more than anything for as many people as possible to be able to do this project. We were, both of us were a part of it last year. We both loved it. We want you guys to love it. And 
So re reach out to us and we'll see if we can make it work. Um, yeah, breakout rooms uh, after this. So we look forward to seeing you. Join Rap. To, to workshops and conventions. All right, so with that, uh, just like we said before, we have our five year-long projects and we've all got to hear them talk, but we also have our student project initiative, which is uh, headed by our R&D lead, Aaron Kuo. And so with that, we're gonna let him talk uh, about the, if you wanna pitch your own project, you can try joining SPI. are welcome and SPI is more than willing to help fund your project and some things that you might want to think about uh, regarding whether or not SPI might be for you is if you have a personal project idea you really want to pursue or if you aren't sure if maybe any of the five other amazing projects offered are for you or if you just want to try something new so um, originally I had some demos that I was gonna bring from my apartment uh, to show outdoors but Alas, the rain had other ideas. So um, on the bottom left is actually a, a solid. Oh, uh, on, the, on the bottom left um, is a, amp, a solid state amp and DAC combo that, <laughs> um, that is actually a project that I'm going to be working on this year where uh, it's going to be my own sort of SPI design project and it's going to be a, designing a tube amp for a headphone amplifier. And on the right is, on the bottom right is a uh, autonomous machine learning based uh, racing vehicle. That's like 126 scale. And then you put it on a track and it's able to train itself and race. And on the, uh, on the top, uh, you might see, oh, that looks like DAB. And it is because DAB was actually initially developed two years ago by um, a former project and lab manager, I believe. Um, within SPI. So yeah, a lot of project ideas out there. Um, next slide, yeah. And so regarding the required experience, there's practically none. So all you really need to have is interest in something that you want to pursue, whether that be maybe signals and systems or uh, maybe like machine learning or just about anything. And um, you just, as long as you want to learn about it, SPI is more than willing to back you. And by the way, I believe it's the only option that doesn't have a deposit. So virtually risk-free. And regarding the project timeline, um, I, I'm, for SPI, I'm planning to keep things relatively laissez-faire. Uh, fall quarter, um, it's just going to mainly consist of logistics and applications. So at the end of this presentation, the project applications will open and within there, you can, th there's going to be a question asking you to submit like a brief project idea summary. And um, following your application for the first two or we for the first two weeks after the application deadline, um, you're, I'm going to ask that all members kind of prepare a brief presentation covering the logistics of their project. There's a lot more information in the syllabus available. And following the presentation, then all projects can kind of hit the ground running and start designing. I plan to keep things, uh, like I said, pretty chill. So two check-ins with me every single quarter, and that's just to make sure that, you know, try to keep things on time, make sure that people aren't falling too far behind. And it, it'll consist, persist through winter and spring quarter. And by the end of spring quarter, hopefully, all of the projects will have a completed final product. <laughs> so as I said, um, SPI is on the surface pretty chill, but 
Um, while the project syllabus isn't very rigorous, this, is, this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed funding all year. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll be hosting bi-quarterly check-ins for all of the groups. And there doesn't need to be like, uh, I can't think of the best way to put this, but I'm just looking for some progress. And um, a complete lack of progress could result in decreased funding for your project in the following quarters. And more information is available regarding the application process and um, other logistics on the syllabus. And if you have any questions and concerns, feel free to send them my way. So that was all of our project introductions. Um, now we're just gonna go over quick what you can do next. Uh, so tonight we will open up our project applications. We The link for it is right there. We'll be sending that, that out in our Discord as well. Um, so there's one application form for all of our projects. So it'll first ask you for some basic information and then ask you what's your primary choice for your project. Um, then each project has specified some questions that they're interested in asking you um, specific to their project and you'll have to go through those. Um, you are allowed to apply to multiple projects. Um, so you will ask you for your cho first choice and then we'll ask you if you want to specify another project as your backup choice. You can specify one as your backup choice just in case one of the projects gets too full. Um, and you can specify like three if you want, three projects if you, like total if you want, but I think two should be, should be plenty. Um, in terms of timeline, those applications will close this coming Saturday night at 11.59 p.m. So you have the week to ask questions to the leads, to reach out to us on Discord, to come stop by the lab and ask us in person if you have any questions. Um, and then we will get back to you about whether or not you are accepted into a specific project by next Monday. So one week from now or two days after the project is due. And then project lectures will get up and running Pretty much immediately, like um, RAP has their first lecture literally next Monday. Um, so we'll get right to it and you guys can have a lot of fun getting into those projects immediately. Um, so yeah, we just want to thank you all for coming. Um, we will open up breakout rooms right out at, right after this where you can go ask project lead specific questions that you may have and get more information about the project. Um, don't forget about that project form. It's due this Sunday, this Saturday night. 11.59 p.m. Um, and remember to stop by the lab if you want to see that jar to guess how many, how many push buttons are in there and also just a quick plug join our discord for the latest information about our projects. Um, so with that, unless you have anything else to add Brendan, I'm going to go ahead and open up breakout rooms. Yeah, sounds good. All right.